Right, the function f has domain minus infinity minus 1 and is defined by this here. And it says then part a right down the range of f. Okay, so um, we've got f of x to be 4x squared minus 3. And that's defined for the domain minus infinity minus 1. Okay, and we want to find in a the range. So we just need to look at what's happening to these values here. Okay, um, and minus infinity. All right. Now, of course, we've got the square function here. So, quite interesting what happens, isn't it, when you've got minus infinity. When you put that in here, when you put a massive value in here and square it, okay, and when you square, of course, a negative, it becomes positive, doesn't it? Because, you know, negative times a negative is positive. So, this will become positive infinity, okay? Become an even bigger infinity, but a positive one. Times it by four, even bigger, and then taking away taking away three isn't going to make much difference. So this is going to infinity, isn't it? Okay, plus infinity. And if you think about our graph of a quadratic, it does, doesn't it? You know, it does quadratic smiley face. As x goes to minus infinity, it does go to infinity. The graph. Okay, so there you go. You've got that, and then we're going to put minus one in. Okay, so minus one, we put that in here. So four times minus one all squared, um, take away 3. So you can use the calculator on that if you want, but that will come out to be 7, yeah? No, it won't be, because that's 4. It'll come out to be 1, won't it? It won't be positive 1 there, okay? So um, your range will be um, 1, and it'll include 1, because minus 1 is included all the way to infinity okay part b find an expression for the inverse function of f and write down the range and domain of f to the minus one okay so if f of x is equal to 4x squared minus 3 all right well then you write this as y equals 4x squared minus 3 okay you always write it in terms of y and to get the inverse function you need to get it so that you have it in terms of x. So, you know, x equals, sorry. So you have, you have x in terms of y. So you have x equals. Now here, just rearrange it. Take the minus 3 over. It becomes plus 3. Okay. And then it's pl y plus 3 is 4x squared. And then what you can do then is to divide by the 4. So that gives you the x squared. All right. And then we need to, then, you know, to get x then, we need to take the square over. And we square root. Okay. And it's important when you square root, you have to determine plus or minus, right? You, and you square root the whole thing, whole thing, but it is plus or minus square root, isn't it? And we need to decide then, right? Because for a function, you, you can't have plus or minus. You need to decide, is it going to be plus or is it going to be minus? You need to decide that. And quite clearly, um, you know, all you've got to do is, you've just got to think about what we're getting here. We're getting the x values, okay? And you've got to ask yourself, do we want our x values to be positive or negative? Now, x is in our domain, isn't it? They are our domain values. Let's look at our domain here, the x values for, for the function f. Let's look at our domain. Look, look at our domain there. The x values are negative, aren't they? Okay? Domain of f is negative. So you can say, but domain of f is negative. So take, we're just going to say take this, the negative root. Okay? That's what I would say there. Because the domain of f is negative. So in other words, negative this equals x. All right? And um, to finish it off, then, obviously, you need to write it as f to the minus 1 of x. Okay? And you need to put it, because it's, it's a function in its own right, you need to put it um, in terms of x. Um, and what you could actually do as well, as well as changing this to x plus 3, you know, changing that to an x plus 3, you could actually just... Just put the square root on the top, and actually you could square root the bottom. You know, that's something you could do, because, you know, square root of 4 is 2. So we could do that there. And you get your, you get your answer. Okay, there's our inverse function. Um, it does go on then and says, and asks for the range and domain of f to the minus 1. Now remember, okay, that the, um, do, the um, domain of this, okay, domain of f to the minus 1 is simply equal to the range of f okay it always is okay so we know the range of f we worked it out before okay is one infinity okay right because because uh, f to the minus one 
takes on the range, doesn't it? Whatever the output you get from f, that's what the inverse function of f takes on in terms of its domain. And then the range of the inverse function, okay, is quite simply the domain of f. Okay, it always is, always will be, it always sort of opposite, because the outputs you get from this, okay, will give you the domain of f. If we go back to this here, it's more clear right here. What you get from this, okay, will give you the x values. So the range of f to minus 1 will take you back to the x values. So it's equal to the domain of, of f, which was minus infinity minus 1, which we had after the question at the top there, okay, as we can see up there. Um, then it says, part C then, um, evaluate f to the minus 1 of 6. So I'll, I'll do that up here, okay? Now, I, I've, I've got my f inverse function here as this, okay? So if I put 6 in here, okay, so if I do f to the minus 1 of 6, okay, I'll have this, okay, so I'm putting 6 in. So that'll be the square root of 9 over 2. So that'll become, um, the square root of 9 is 3, isn't it? So it'll be 3 over 2, or negative 3 over 2. Okay, so that's part one answered. Okay, part two then. Part two asks for, by carrying out an appropriate calculation involving f, verify that your answer to part one is correct. Okay, so we need to work out a calculation involving f, an appropriate one, verify that the answer to part one is correct. Well, what we could do, right? Remember now what I said, the inverse function, right, takes the... Um, range of f and it takes you back to the domain of f so this should be in the domain of f if we chuck that now into f okay let's just see chuck that back into f so we have um, using our functions minus 3 over 2 squared to take away 3 so I'm going to use my calculator if I do that hang on let's get this right And look what I get. I get 6. Okay? So it's right, isn't it? I got back to this, if, if that makes sense there. Okay? So we get back to this, so we can say that, quite rightly, um, inverse function is correct. Job done.